Welcome to Lakewood United Church of Christ, vigil of remembrance and lament. We are a congregation where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we welcome you this evening and we affirm that it is both good and strange to gather in this way this evening. It is good because we know we need community. This past year has shown us how vital community is. It is good to be gathered in God's spirit to mark this solemn anniversary, a year of pandemic living, to have space to grieve all that has been lost, to mourn, to lament. And yet we also acknowledge that it is strange, for we are still living in the midst of this pandemic. It is strange because for many of us, we cannot physically be gathered together. So whatever emotions you may be feeling tonight, know that there is space for them here and that God holds them as God holds us now. In this brief service, we will have a few different type, times of prayer. Pastor Kurt will read a psalm and lead us in the ancient ritual of lighting candles. Allison will sing and play. You are invited to hum or sing along. And we'll have a prayer time where we leave space for both silence and for you to name out loud the many losses of this year. So right now, before we uh, go any further, if you would take a moment, pause the recording if you need to, and gather two objects. One is a candle. Any type of candle will do, one that you can light or turn on. The other is a rock or a seashell or some object that you may have around your home that you can hold. We will be using both of those in the vigil this evening. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. So here we are, ready to be held in the restful arms of Christ this evening. Will you pray with me? Holy One, you are a God of comfort. You gather us in this night, reminding us that though we are distanced, we are not alone. Though we are weary, we are sustained by you. Though we are grieving, you hold us and wipe away every tear. As we are gathered this evening in our many homes, may we feel your presence among us through the strength of the community, in the flicker of a flame, in humming of a familiar tune, in knowing that our sorrows and laments are held and heard by you. We pray all of these things in your many names. Amen. Our scriptures are full of lament. The Psalms are full of lament. The prophets often speak a word of lament. There's even a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations. Our scriptures bear witness to the truth that our lives are sometimes hard. And sometimes we are angry and sometimes our anger is directed at God. We know that God can take it. God's promise is not that we will never know pain or never know loss, but that we need not go through it alone, that we need not pretend that everything is great when everything isn't great. Hear now the words of Psalm 42, a psalm of lament and a psalm of hope. The two can live side by side in our scriptures and live side by side in our hearts. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember. As I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in the procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. 
Why are you cast out, my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise God, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon and from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. At night, her song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise God, my help, and my God. And now, if you haven't done so already, you're invited to light a candle. We're reminded that candles are symbols of God's holy presence in our midst. And so may you know God's holy presence and God's holy presentness in this time. Amen. Join me in singing, Lord, listen to your children praying. This is number five zero in your songbook. The words are, Holy One, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Holy One, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Just hum along if you can't keep up with the lyrics. We'll do three times. we will take some time to be in prayer together. I will start prayer time and leave some time, uh, about a minute or so, for silent prayer. This will feel way too long for some and way too short for others, but know that I will keep the time. 
After that, we will move into a time of naming our losses, our laments out loud to God. No loss is too small to name in this prayer time. And know and take heart that your prayers will join the cacophony of prayers of others. I will end our prayer time by sharing a prayer from the SALT Project. So will you join me in prayer this evening? Good and gracious God, this has been a year, a year of loss, a year of pivoting and reimagining, a year of breaking down, a year of resilience, a year of saying goodbye to those we love far too soon. We come to you this evening with much on our hearts and our minds, needing to remember, needing to lament. So hear our prayers, Divine Healer, and in your mercy hold us as you receive them. Hear now the prayers of our hearts, silently lifted to you. God, we know that naming our losses, our remembrances, our laments is an ancient spiritual practice, and this night we boldly participate. Hear our grief, O oh God, as we call out our losses of this year. Hear each prayer, merciful one. Good Shepherd, we thank you for walking with us through this valley of the shadow of death, through suffering, the anxiety, the loneliness, the boredom, the longing for closeness and the longing for personal space, the confusion and fear, the impatience and hope, the good days and the bad. Forgive us for our suspicions of each other, the ways this ordeal has made us more divided as a country and as a world. Help us bridge our differences and come together, even as we are physically distanced. Thank you for the ways, large and small, this ordeal has strengthened us as a community. The acts of kindness, new ways of doing things, the support we've offered and received. Forgive us for the inequities this pandemic has ex exposed. Kindle in our hearts a new commitment to justice as we build and rebuild our community together. Keep us ever mindful of those most in need. We pray especially for those of us who have lost loved ones, lost jobs, lost hope. Let us be good company even from afar good neighbors and good friends. We pray especially for those on the front lines of the pandemic, for all who are in harm's way. Gentle God, we ask that you continue to keep watch with those who work or watch or weep this day. Walk with those whose bodies are holding memories of sickness, of trauma, of pain, of confusion, of chaos, of isolation. Give your angels charge over those who still cannot sleep because anxiety of, or grief. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, all for your love's sake. 
God of life and hope. We lift our spirits as we dare to look ahead, dare to hope and dream about the new world to come. Strengthen our efforts, deepen our wisdom so that we may hasten that day. And until that day, keep our eyes and hearts open to the signs of hope and life around us. For all these things and more, gentle God, we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus, our crucified and risen Jesus. Amen. Amen. There are places that are made holy by what has occurred there, what has been experienced there, what is remembered there. There are stories in our scriptures of marking certain places with stones as a memorial site or as a place where God's presence was known and felt in a special way. And so as the spirit moves you, if you so desire, you can take the stone that you've been holding or seashell or whatever it is that you're using and you can put it in a special place in your home. Put it on a shelf or on a windowsill or on a desk or a table that it might be a memorial, a memory, a tangible reminder of this service, of this year, of the losses that you have endured. You can pray a blessing or a word as you place your stone, whatever your heart longs to say. And in placing that stone, you can leave behind, we hope leave behind a bit of the burden, the weariness, and the pain of these pandemic times. It is not a cure-all. It is not to say that you'll never again be sad over these losses, but hopefully, possibly, you can leave this vigil a bit lighter, having experienced this time of lament, this time of remembrance, and may this be part of the healing. And if you'd prefer, you can take your stone outside. You can place it somewhere out there you are free to do whatever feels best. Perhaps you don't want to mark this time and need no more reminders. Then feel free to return your stone to wherever you got it and just let it go. Whatever feels right is what is best. And so, as we bring this time of lament and remembrance to a close, may you know the love of God incarnate, the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, this day and every day. Amen.
my soul it is well it is well with my soul